Casey, and I'm Mariel. Thank you for joining us tonight to raise the roof for Fibonacci. Okay, just to give you a little overview of our presentation, we're going to start by telling you a little bit about what the Fibonacci numbers are and how they are important and where we can see them in our world. Also, we're going to talk about the Fibonacci Association and where we came across the research problem that we are presenting today. Then we'll move on into our research problem. We'll show you the initial problem that was proposed and a little bit about the definitions and theorems that we use for our proof. And then we'll show you our actual original proof for the problem. And to conclude, we'll tell you a little bit about our future plans for Fibonacci research. Okay, the Fibonacci sequence begins with one, then one, and proceeds by adding the previous two terms in the sequence to find the next number. So it proceeds as one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, and 55. Or it could be stated as f of 1 equals 1, f of 2 equals 1, and f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 for every n greater than or equal to 3. You may be wondering where Fibonacci numbers can be seen. Well, actually, they're all around us, especially in nature. The number of petals on flowers are typically a Fibonacci number. If you take a look at these flowers, the number of petals on these flowers vary from 3 to 5 to 8 and 13. These are all actually Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers can also be seen with animals. For example, if you had a male rabbit and a female rabbit, after a year due to breeding, the number of rabbit pairs that you would have would be a Fibonacci number. And if you looked at the month-to-month -month number of rabbit pairs throughout that year, you would see the Fibonacci sequence form. Fibonacci numbers are everywhere, like Casey had stated. They can be found in biology, like the plants and animals that she stated before, combinatorics, and formal languages. The Fibonacci Association was established in 1963. They focus on Fibonacci numbers and other related mathematics. And they also, also emphasize in finding new results, research proposals, challenging problems, and new proofs of old ideas similarly to what we'd be doing today. The Fibonacci Quarterly seeks intelligible, well-motivated, university-level articles. Illustrations and tables should be included to the extent that they clarify main ideas of the text. A well-developed list of references is required. Not only does the Fibonacci Quarterly seek articles, but mathematicians and professionals can post challenging problems to be proved. All proofs submitted must be completely original, and although the Fibonacci Quarterly is mainly for an audience of mathematicians and professionals, undergrad students can also submit solutions to these problems, which brings us to our talk today. This was one of the initial problems proposed from the August 2012 issue of the Fibonacci Quarterly. It was proposed by Marcia Mursa of the University of Craiova, Romania. The problem is as follows. Let n be a non-negative integer. Prove that the summation from k equals 1 to n of the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 is equal to the ceiling of f of n plus 2 minus 1 divided by 11 plus 3n divided by 5. And this is the problem that Mary Ellen and I chose to submit a proof for. Just to go over a few definitions to start with that you'll see throughout our proof. Throughout the proof, frequently you will see the ceiling, of, the ceiling function and the floor function. To be exact, the ceiling of x is the unique integer r, such that r minus 1 is less than x, is less than or equal to r. In simpler terms, the ceiling of x is the least integer that is greater than or equal to x. So an example of this is the ceiling of 2.3. So the least integer that is greater than or equal to 2.3 is 3. And another example of this is the ceiling of negative 5.1, which is equal to negative 5. Okay, on the other hand, the floor function, the floor of x to be exact is the unique integer s, such that s is less than or equal to x is less than s plus 1. So in simpler terms, the floor of x is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So an example of this would be the floor of 2.3. The greatest integer that is less than or equal to 2.3 is 2. And another example, the floor of negative 5.1 is equal to negative 6. Also, some useful notation that is seen throughout our proof is n mod m. To find n mod m, you're finding the remainder when you take n divided by m for all n and m in the natural numbers. An example of this is 15 mod 7. Remember, when you're finding 15 mod 7, you're finding the remainder. So 15 divided by 7 has a remainder of 1. Another example would be 25 mod 13. When you divide 25 by 13, you have a remainder of 12. And 8 mod 2 has a 0 remainder. Okay, along with those definitions and notations, we will be using three main theorems throughout our proof. The first one goes as follows. 
If n and m are in the set of natural numbers, then the floor of n divided by m equals n divided by m minus n mod m divided by m. The second part of the first theorem is the ceiling of n divided by m is equal to the floor of n plus m minus 1 divided by m. The third part is the summation from k equals 1 to n of f of k is equal to f of n plus 2 minus 1. To see the proof of these, you can refer to the references at the bottom of the page. The second theorem is if the sequence of a of k is in the set of natural numbers, it has a, it has a period of p, then the summation from k equals 1 to n of a of k is equal to the floor of n divided by p times the summation from k equals 1 to p of a of k plus the summation from k equals 1 to n mod p of a of k. The third theorem is let a be in the set of integers and b be in the set of real numbers and l be between 0 and 1 be such that a equals b plus l, then a is the ceiling of b. Again, this was the initial problem that was proposed, and now we're going to move into our original proof. According to theorem 3 that Marielle just went over, it is enough for us to prove that the summation from k equals 1 to n of the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 is equal to f of n plus 2 minus 1 divided by 11 plus 3n divided by 5 plus some l of n, which is greater than or equal to 0, and less than 1. Now, according to theorem 3, the summation from k equals 1 to n of the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 is our a term. The f of n plus 2 minus 1 divided by 11 plus 3n divided by 5 is our b term. And then again, we have some l of n that is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. So if we are able to prove this statement, then by theorem 3, we can say that our a is equal to the ceiling of b, which would mean the summation from k equals 1 to n of the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 is then equal to the ceiling of f of n plus 2 minus 1 divided by 11 plus 3n divided by 5, which is our original statement. Therefore, we will have proven it. That is our goal in mind. As you can see, the left-hand side of that statement does not quite look like the right-hand side. We are going to have to do some modifications. And we're going to start by using theorem 1. At the bottom of the slide, we have part 1 and part 2 of theorem 1, and that's where we're going to start with our modifications. So the first thing that we did was we rewrote the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 as a floor function. And that was using part 2 of theorem 1. After this, we rewrote the floor of f of k plus 10 divided by 11 without the floor function. And that was by using part 1 of theorem 1, simply plugging and chugging into those theorems. We also took a 1 11th out of each summation in that second step. And the next step, we did some simplifications of the summations. We knew that the summation from k equals 1 to n of f of k was equal to f of n plus 2 minus 1. That was from part 3 of theorem 1. We also knew that the summation from k equals 1 to n of 10 was 10n. And we distributed the 1 11 to each term. Now you can see we have a red segment to the right, and this is what we're going to further modify, and Marielle will show you how we did that. Okay, so now we can concentrate on the summation of k, from k equals 1 to n of f of k plus 10 mod 11. Since we know that the period of this is 10, we can use the fact to simplify the equation using theorem 2 that we had stated before. Next, the summation from k equals 1 to 10 of f of k plus 10 mod 11 can be simplified to 34 since it has a definite summation limit, and after that everything is a remainder, which turns into the second part of the equation. We can then use the first part of theorem 1 to simplify the equation even further to n divided by 10 minus n mod 10 divided by 10. So at this point, we have modified the summation from k equals 1 to n of the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 into f of n plus 2 minus 1 divided by 11 plus 10n divided by 11 minus 1 11. Then the red part that Marielle just modified, we can substitute in for that 34 times n divided by 10 minus n mod 10 divided by 10 plus the summation from k equals 1 to n mod 10 of f of k plus 10 mod 11. Now after performing some algebra, we see that we can get this result in the desired form of a equals b plus some l of n. Now up here on the slide, we have our l of n that we found, but there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to prove that this l of n is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. Because as I said before, if we can do that, we can say that our a is equal to the ceiling of b, which proves our original statement. So, since n mod 10 is in the set of integers from 0 to 9, we can easily see that ln consists of a set of fractions all greater than 0 and less than 1. 
This can be found using Mathematica. Therefore, we found that the summation from k equals 1 to n of the ceiling of f of k divided by 11 equals f of n plus 2 minus 1 divided by 11 plus 3n divided by 5 plus some L of n, which we showed was between 0 and 1. Therefore, this proves that how we raise the roof of Fibonacci and proves our original statement to be true. So if you're wondering our future plans and what we did with this proof, we did submit the proof to the Fibonacci quarterly in January 2013. It is under review and will be anonymously reviewed by professional mathematicians. One original proof that was submitted will be highlighted in the journal, and also all the names of those who submitted correct proofs will also have their names featured in the Fibonacci Quarterly. As for our future endeavors, the publication of Fibonacci Quarterly featuring our problem will be released by November of 2013, and in the meantime, we plan to submit more original proofs and to propose an open problem similar to this one. Thank, Thank you. you. And these are our references. Are there any questions? <laughs> if, if anyone would like a copy of the proof to look over on their own time, make more sense of it. <laughs> it's a lot to cram into 15 minutes, so anyone else would like to? Just like No problem. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>